Hey guys, welcome back to the pod, the Latin Film Pod. We are back. This doing... is the first one in a while. It's been a long time since we did a video, and now it's also been a long time since we did a pod. But yes, we're here to talk about Even Lift If Tempest. Tempest Voltage's first major console game. We already did a video on it, so make sure to go check that out if you want our first impressions just based off of like the trailer and promotional material. Yep. But now we've played the whole game, the entire game, except for the sad love endings. I'm not gonna do it. And I'm just gonna say right here, at the front of the video, trigger warning, if you have suicidal ideations, definitely just skip this video, skip this game 100% more, more so than the video. Um, and then also skip this video, if you plan to play this game, you know you like dark concepts and you think this is cool already and you don't wanna know what happens because this is going to be a spoiler video. If you just wanna know our thoughts, we didn't like the game. Yeah, we didn't like the game. Not worth if you want a general summary, definitely click on the link below to the video before because we go over what the game is supposed to be about. It's We're a lot more still... excited and positive in that one because we haven't played it yet. Yet, Ooh, but we're down. I guess, um, yeah, this is gonna be podcast style, so we're not gonna do a bunch of crazy edits. We're just gonna really talk about our thoughts. Um, we have like some general themes that we'll start with, but the first thing we kind of want to talk about is like how does it compare for you to your expectations as far as like voltage coming to console? Like, did they do what you thought they would do coming to console, like changing the game, or do you feel like it was stagnant? Like, what were your thoughts? I feel let down. I will say some things I anticipated. I anticipated the choppy st story writing. I anticipated <laughs> the laziness of certain things. Um, if you've watched our other video of like Tokyo Love Hustle, I felt similarly to just Most jumbled. of the newer titles have been kind of jumbled. How yeah. I and believe they hired somebody specifically for story direction on this though. So. so I feel like they should not, they should be fired. Person. Yes. Um, a awesome. couple things that I was, we were both excited <laughs> about was one, like the gameplay element, a little bit investigative. Um, I know Jan loves Ace Attorney and Danganronpa. It kind of seemed like it could be like that. Yeah, they were similar. Definitely you could see where they got some inspiration from. I think more Danganronpa style and the Ace Attorney for the way that the trials are going. And again, just to give you laps of what the, the trials are supposed to be, you're basically investigating. You have a small amount of time to investigate. You might be one of the killers or, or not, who knows? Then you vote them off and it kind of goes on from there. Yeah, so and that's the gameplay element. Yeah. Um, it's basically a very stripped down version of those games. Like, yeah. It's just the investigative section. You only have so much time, so you can pick a few different people that you're going to. Yeah. You're not going to get to investigate everybody. Just the people that you have time for and that plays into if you're going to do well in the trial and then you kind of have to choose things you have like 10 seconds i think to like make a yeah. choice um and yeah that's pretty much it that's the whole gameplay i think that that takes a bit a back seat considering like how much story and just writing there is compared to gameplay it's a very small sliver there's maybe only one gameplay section per rat right or is it two um, I would say, I guess it depends on how you slice it up. Is if you insta if you say that the investigation is its own and then the trial, then it's two. Otherwise, it's one because it's the trial. And um, yeah, so you get typically per route. I think Zen's gets two, but it's a continuation of another one. So it's, it's typically one. one per route, but maybe one point five being <laughs> generous. Um, so that, if you're curious about that, um, before we get into like spoilers and stuff like that, we're gonna go over the general plot. We're gonna go over the MC's personality. Um, we're gonna to touch on setting. Uh, maybe we can touch on plot and setting together. Yeah. Yeah, plot and setting, MC, and then we're just gonna go on our thoughts for each individual love interest. Yes, so the Start plot. Yeah, the, the general plot of the game is that you are living in a town named, named Historica. Um, there's not actually a set timeline. This is apparently done on purpose with um, contention. It's basically a kingdom. I would say this general setting is probably in the 17, 1800s, to be fair. It doesn't you, seem like a giant place either. It's yeah, big. it's a pretty small um, town, as you can see with the backgrounds. But anyway, yeah, so you are the daughter of a nobleman. He's pretty high up in there and your mom is passed away and you have now, um, now you're, that has remarried to the princess, uh, one of the princesses of Historica, her name is, I'm just gonna call her Eve, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's like Evangelina, but it could be something different. Now, yeah, Evangelina is now married, and she, she's already been married once, and now you have adopted an A-stepsister when you were, a th you, she said she came in like for the first six years. They don't actually specifically state when. Between like five and 10, I wanna yeah. say. Um, basically, to 10. Yeah, but basically what happens is that immediately Eve is very abusive to her, to you physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, all of those, Wonderful, awful things you could <laughs> think of. That doesn't so dark for the second you said Eve, I was thinking of Life Size. Oh yeah. That's great. 
No matter where she goes. <laughs> the rapper. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, Evie Eve, how you do it? But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so then you are basically cast off. And you can almost comparatively say this into a Cinderella-esque story where like yeah. Cinderella is so mistreated, but now take it up about 10 notches and then you are cast away. They call it the attic, but I'm pretty sure it's like the basement. Yeah, um, it seems like in the lower cellars, like... Yeah, and you are basically trapped there. You're never allowed to leave. You, you're given rotten food. You're treated just to daily beatings, and at some point or another, you're not taught anything, so you've lost the ability to properly speak. Although your thoughts, you can speak just eloquently, so I guess I didn't I'm not. I've never been out. abused, so I'm not sure how those, <laughs> but yeah, luckily. No. But, and another thing is Maya is her attendant, and you can't really get much of a feel for her in the prologue. But. Yeah, so then you just kind of launch in, and that is the main general part. You're thinking, I just want to be, basically, you want to reach out to death because you have now lived Lived this horrible life you're now 18 it feels purposeless you just don't want to live anymore and and there kind seems of just... like there's a sliver of hope that you could get out though because yeah. it's you're gonna be your 18th birthday or less seems like she's gonna let you borrow a nice dress and everything like that um but then she kind of goes crazy and like slashes it up mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to see those beginning scenes i have um a little bit of the prologue on my main channel as a let's play if you're curious but um, as it starts to get even more despair with all of that, Lucian then is the first character that we meet. He is the prince of Historica, one of the three princes of Historica. Yes, so keep this in mind. This is a very important thing because Eve is a princess. Her, um, her yeah. brother is the current king, sitting, um, current crowned king. Lucian is the king's son. It's an illegitimate son. They bring this up constantly. Um, so that would make Eve his aunt, by the way. Yeah. So he comes in to see his aunt and he goes directly towards your room and he finds out that you have been treated very, very poorly. Because he says, says multiple times he's been looking for you yeah. for basically the past 10 years. And you guys were apparently childhood friends who played together and got along really well. You do not remember this. Um, and I already just didn't mean that much to you because you remember that you played with him, but you don't like care. Yeah. I, you know, like I was five. <laughs> you know, don't, hold, don't hold it against me. But yeah, so then you decidedly... He decidedly takes you out of it and he says, You're, I'm no longer gonna let you treat like this. You're gonna come with me to live at the castle. And you leave the house with limited, like, Orla kind of protests, but your stepmother basically doesn't say much of anything. Yeah, your hair and is like chopped off now. It's traumatic and you run away. And you're walking through the town of Historica and this is now, um, now our. Lucian, you're kind of asking Lucian, why would you do this for me? Why would you do this? He's like, because I've been looking for you and I would never want anything to happen to such a precious friend. You kind of do at least say like, we're not even that good friends. Yeah, her th in internal thoughts, like kind of jumping into the MC's personality a little here before we go fully into it, but her thoughts are a little like gloomy and negative and you know. Constantly, they don't actually really change. <laughs> and she never is like, I don't know, she doesn't She doesn't think very fondly of Lucien, like mm -hmm. as fondly as he seems to think of her. Um, so. But when they're in town, they run into his other brothers. Yes. So Conrad and Parker. Conrad and Parker, who have picked on Lucien, actually mostly everybody picks on Lucien, he kind of seems, at this point right now, he seems very meek, very like- Babyish. Some just, of his friends are babyish too. Um, you know, there is a point at some point, for no reason he thinks it's like the symbol of victory to say, like I couldn't use the bathroom by myself until I was nine, like nobody cares. Nobody I know. Cares. <laughs> I think there's so many times when he takes like a grand stand and he thinks he's like really doing something and everyone's just like anyway if you ever if you guys have ever seen that show the boondocks there's this point where somebody's trying to make a point and then it goes dead silent when somebody does that and they're like man what the f is you talking about like <laughs> that's basically what happens dude there. i haven't seen the boondocks like in forever <laughs> since i was little back on like what was it called at night late at night it was um adult swim adult swim yes kids out of the pool for adult swim so, um, yeah. But anyways, you so, go to the castle, right? And you basically have this room, and Lucian, who is trying so hard to help you and wants to be there for you, gets... It has been sincere and saved you, by yeah. the way. So it's crazy that you just abandoned him. So it gets, like, sidestepped because Conrad, basically the con... Conrad the con man... <laughs> Literally. Basically comes in and says, I can truly save you if you let me marry you. And she, without hesitation, says... That's a good idea. Yeah, like let's my life's it. been pretty trash. Baby, so yeah. let's get married in your <laughs> mattress. It's like that's basically what happened. Literally, she's ready. Like she's engaged, but she does kind of like 
humbles herself and is like, but I'm a poor peasant girl who's so dumb and I know nothing. And he's and like... And Lucien's so nice, by the way, that he, you feel like he wants to be like, eh, that's not a good idea. But he's like, if that's what you want. I'm like, yeah. And Conrad's like, don't worry. You might be dumb today, but you won't be dumb the rest of your life. And then he gets her lessons and does definitely very much deceive her into believing that he genuinely cares about yeah, her. Yeah, I think the lessons, I kind of forgot about that part. I could see where she's like, wow, he like helped me learn to like talk again. Yeah, so I think I almost a year has passed and stuff. And then he's like- And this is the, all just the common route so far, by the way. Yeah, and she hasn't met anybody outside of Conrad and Lucien and a couple of the servants. And Conrad's like, they're doubting that you should be my wife. They just think that you're not good enough. Oh and, yeah, really quick. I just want to mention, cause she just is going to pop up the rest of the time. Maya, like I mentioned before, who was like your maid, but you couldn't really tell if she likes you or not. Now she has basically asked to leave the Linzel Manor, which is her last name, Anastasia Linzel. She, um, and by the way, they do not keep your name intact. You can put your name in, Kayla and Yana, but they will just switch it to Anastasia randomly throughout the story, completely breaking self-insert. <laughs> I just want so many tangents, but basically Maya has decided to follow her over to the castle and pledges her loyalty to her says she would do anything for her she made a promise to her mom and she's so happy that she's safe now and now she's serving her yeah and it doesn't make any sense so that's that her happens. other like daily person she sees and so um basically when conrad tells her all this she's like how can i prove that i am worthy he says why don't we do this you're going to take on a big task or she kind of suggests and he's like you can take on a big task and it's going to work out and here's where things get super dumb because he just says why don't you do the country's taxes and she without a doubt says red sure. flag red flag you're yeah. 18 years old you've just learned to talk and now you're doing people's taxes you do like elementary math and she's like i i don't think that's a good idea and he's like i'm sure you can do it and she said well if you're sure honey i can do it and here's the thing that she goes, actually does pretty good yeah but it's because she's like if i just get lessons every single day and i guess you can say it with the idea of like if you got trained on a job you would learn how to do it so that's yeah really and one truth. thing like one positive thing about her because we don't really like her personally but one positive thing is she's very determined so if she's decided she's going to do it she's going to learn how to do it and she's going to figure it out so she did and so then she's getting personal help and but then she, she notices something a little suspect she said says that she finds basically the sorry my like bobby pin was falling out might be um sorry so she says that she's like noticing something wrong in the records and thinks that there is some embezzlement going on and it makes conrad look bad and she loves conrad so she's like there must be a mistake right so she goes to the two people that she's been talking to in the castle the first person she goes to is maya she asks her the maid to go out on site to the project that conrad's been working on that she thinks he's embezzling money through um because she thinks he's basically hiring people and not paying them and killing them off basically like slaves even though he's allocating funds to paying them and he's just not doing it um so maya goes off on that journey and then she goes to lucian and asks him about it and he basically gets her zen right yeah because lucian can't get himself too involved because then they'll get caught and then he is the prince and it'll just go really 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 bad for him so basically this leads to zen the secondary love interest that you'll get to meet here in this case um i don't remember when you meet the other ones but it doesn't matter so then zen who's supposedly the son of the viscount and also really he kind of takes a liking to you and is like listen i'm gonna help you out girl you can set up like i'm gonna just let you know like right now like you can set up and she's like no Lu or conrad would never do that conrad basically plants in her head that lucian is sus who's um, Lucien is like, no, Conrad is sus, which is true because Conrad is- but Because Lucien's so meek and he's not very convincing. Like the second MC is like, no, you don't know Conrad. And she like, pops off on him about it. And he's like, I think like, I know that's my, my brother. brother. But... but anyway, he's just like, oh, you're right. Like you guys are getting married. So I guess that's fine. But he goes out so sad in the prologue. He goes out sad the entire Every route. single round. Like, every single time <laughs> this man pops up on the screen, he going out sad. <laughs> yeah. So she basically finds and figures out that Conrad is doing something he's not supposed to do. And she thinks, okay, at this point, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to be that girl that was in the attic. I'm going to stand up for myself. This actually is a really bad idea. I just want to say, just generally speaking, if you find out somebody's embezzling money, maybe don't confront them about it. Go to the cops. Yeah, she goes She goes about it a little bad because Conrad no, is on to her the whole time. Because first of all, Maya, her trusted assistant, is out there snooping around on the ground. She's a maid. She's not good at this. Yeah, like, why would she be there? So she's she probably popping up. I'm just want to say this in my own mind of mind. She thinks she's being sneaky and everyone's like, do y'all see that girl over there? Yeah, that There's blonde no, bitch with the bright green eyes. What is she doing? We're slaves and we're probably a bunch of men. I don't think she should be here. 
Yeah, so she comes back and tells her the like final info, but she's already kind of basically decided for sure after working with Zen, the Viscount that Lucien introduced her to, that yeah, this is definitely some embezzlement. There's definitely shady dealings going on. Um, but in the midst of that, this is where it gets a little fuzzy for us because we were talking about this just before. She, we can't really call how it goes. But. I will say she basically wants to give Conrad the opportunity to explain himself and is yeah. like, I don't want to doubt the man I'm going to marry. It's like, well, you should probably doubt the man you're going to marry because you agreed to marry him 25 seconds after you met him. But okay, yeah. like, you just never know how worlds go. And then she does bring it up to him and is like, she, and I'm just going to definitely dramatically and acted out. She said, baby. And he was like, baby, what? And she was like, <laughs> baby, I just want you to know, like, I think something going down. And he was like, what you mean? And then she was like, listen, Bean Teen, I think I found some embezzlement and I don't know if it's for sure you, but I'm pretty sure it's for sure you. Doesn't she say it more though? Like, I think someone's trying to like frame you. Yeah, and like- Like, I just want to give you like a little I heads just, up, baby. Yeah, like, cutie can, like, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, I just want you to know. And he's like, no, like, baby, like, biscuit brain. <laughs> Literally biscuit brain. <laughs> biscuit brain. It's me. Like, I'm doing it. And she's like, I have to tell the truth. And here's the thing. Also, who are you going to tell the king? Because, like, his daddy? Like, you think he's, like, he's going to be like, hey, yo, big daddy Conrad. Also, like, maybe, like, play it cool. Be like, ooh, that's kind of hot. Like, I love that you're embezzling. And then like, just leave and then, like, switch it up. Like, oh, my God. It goes with your, like, little cape. Yeah, like, I like your little teal hair. <laughs> I like it, like, it goes with your eyes and, like, your gloves. Mm -hmm. I just, just wanted to know that. But then... She's like, I have to tell the truth. And he's like, if you you can't tell the truth, you're, you basically, he's like, you will marry me. And she's like, I'd actually rather die. Throws herself literally out of the window. Like, she doesn't even think, give it a second thought. She just says, like, I'm going to be trapped remember. with this man forever. My life is in disarray. I can't do this. And then literally yeets herself through the window and Yeet. dies. It would have been very sucky if, like, she threw herself out the window and the worst that happened to her was, like, a couple broken bones. I know, she just like lays on a grassy like <laughs> so funny. But what really happens is she wakes up and it's just like a few days earlier. <laughs> and that's when she realizes that she's gotten basically a second chance. She's not really sure how it happened yeah, at she, that point. She questioned it, but she's like, listen, I'm not gonna squander this chance. She does. Oh, she's gonna squander it <laughs> many, many times throughout the whole game. But basically, um, Maya then is killed for obviously being suspicious as hell. Um, and then she's really mad because now she's like, now you went and killed Maya. <laughs> like, you went and killed my only friend who hasn't been my friend this entire time and let me eat rat poisoning. Yeah, and then they somehow like turn it around on her and like, be, and I know they bring Tyrell into it at this point because I think the only one you don't oh. need is Cryus. So she says, she basically gives up. So Zen kind of is like, I can't really help you and be involved. Lucian is not allowed to talk to you. And she gives up a detail by accident that she technically shouldn't know. And Conrad is like, listen, biscuit head. I think you're a witch. Yeah. And that in brings Tyrell. And Tyrell comes and he's an inquisitor. If you don't know what an inquisitor is, we didn't either. Inquisitors <laughs> we don't explain in, this, well. <laughs> in this town are witch hunters, but they also kind of in a sense serve as they kind of make me think of like the olden times with like those like black hooded guys who would like, you know, executioners. Yeah, that's, that's what, what they are. They like they, torture they, the people yeah. and they, they don't explain who they're working for or anything at this point. It just seems to be a normal government in the prologue, which is a very big point of contention that I have. Yeah, but, they bring up like HR and CPR and stuff and it's really weird. But I want to say too that the Inquisitor has a whip and this is a very huge point to his personality <laughs> that's wrong. It doesn't um, make any sense. So we'll get into that when we get into Tyrell. I just want to say like, he comes on the screen, hot and heavy, has a baby cape, and it's literally a baby cape. Like, and, like you mean business if you're wearing billowy that. pants, though. <laughs> and then he has like these like you half know, up, half down. He has like a little glove that goes up. Uh, he's cute or whatever. Little long hair. I would like to say that sometimes when guys who are basically sticklers for rules, they always have like long hair, and it's kind of funny when you think about it. I'm gonna just name a few because I want to. Point in case is Ziglavis. <laughs> Ziglavis is one. Love him. Stickler for the rules, but he's like I'm all about pro pristine property and like proper or whatever but then has like the long hair ponytail. Um, also, Byaku Yakuchki from Bleach. Like, come on, that's my baby father. Daichi. Yeah, Daichi um, Ishioka. Ishioka. Download Evermore right now and buy him. <laughs> um, oh my God, this seems like a perfect segue for our sponsor, Lovely Ink. Woohoo! Hope you enjoy the commercial. Welcome to Evermore. 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 You're a hardworking publicist in the heart of Tokyo. And today's meeting is about to change your life forever. What path will you choose? 
My love for you is evermore gives you the power to create your dream love story. Now with five love options. Introducing the mysterious masked manager, voiced by popular anime voice actor Kaiji Tang. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that. Enjoy multiple voiced video chats and other interactive elements like texts throughout the story. And make choices to unlock one of three unique endings. And your story doesn't end there with tons of bonus content to explore. Hey, you finally answered. You know, I don't typically call women more than once. Playing hard to get, are we? Visit your app store today and search Evermore to find a new way to fall in love. Download and enjoy base content for free and pay just $4.99 for your complete love story. We hope you'll enjoy the game and support the hardworking developers. So yeah, just guys with long hair, all that. But yeah, so the Inquisitor, I, we'll talk about him later. But yeah, so he comes in and says, I know you're a witch. I'm going to take you down. It to, all happens super fast, too. I'm going to take you to the trial. She does say that it's going like rather quickly. She has no idea what's going on. But she knows in her heart of hearts, and as you know as a player, well, no, she didn't kill Maya. There's no reason to think about it. She's pretty sure it was Conrad. Now, at this point, she thinks that Conrad deliver, deliberately murdered Maya. And this is actually something that I'm questioning now as we're re-talking about it. Did Conrad kill Maya? Did Conrad have somebody else kill I think, Maya? What if or, Tyrell did it? Killed Maya? Because wasn't that Conrad's rat? I don't think, but the witch thing that comes in. So they were saying that it was the membrum, right? So what I'm confused is, well, there was there even a membrum yet in the prologue or was it just a normal, like, we think you're a witch, so we're putting you on trial for the government. Hey, this is editing Kayla in the future here. So just going to clear up the confusion we were just having. So actually Maya's death occurs in the first timeline. So when MC throws herself out the window and is devastated and then it gets reset and she doesn't know how it gets reset. It was that previous timeline there before it got reset that Maya had, or Conrad had Maya killed in. And when she comes back, she's able to keep Maya alive because of the different choices that she makes. However, in that timeline, Anastasia, the MC, ends up getting accused of being the one who embezzled the money. So Conrad's able to pin it on her, and then with her slip up and something that she says, something she shouldn't have known yet in that timeline, Tyrell agrees with Conrad and says she's super suspicious, takes her into the trial. So that's how that happened. So basically, in the prologue universe, Witches are just a thing that the entire town hates, and if you're accused of being a witch, you can be put on trial and burned at the stake for any reason. You don't have to be a murderer. The whole membrum thing and the Witch of Ruin being the one who creates the membrum that kills and then that trial, that is only after the prologue. So they're two separate universes. Kind of confused as to why they did that, but yeah. The prologue is kind of a mess. It's for a couple of different reasons. People's personalities are a little bit different. And um, also the trial is just completely different. It's in a plain courtroom. It goes by a lot quicker. And then you just get burned at the stake. And it's not even the technically the related to the trials that you go through later. No, it's not related it. at all. And it never comes back to the courtroom. Whenever there's a trial in the future, we'll explain how that goes down. Um, I guess I can just explain it now. It's yeah. In the future, it's a carnival. There's someone called the Witch of Ruin who puts it on and the Inquisitors then instead of just working for the government like it seems like they do in the prologue they now work for the witch even though in the prologue they make they allude to tyrell the, the main inquisitor they basically say he doesn't like witches and he doesn't because the second he thinks you're a witch he's like ew witch you know what i mean yeah. but like you work for one in the future it's weird so basically in the future, it's always him and the other Inquisitors working for the witch, basically, and they basically help move along the process. But in the future, there's a membrum that the Witch of Ruin puts out to somebody. That person has to kill, as the membrum, somebody that, ha that has been bothering them on their heart or whatever. They kill the person, and then the next morning, five people wake up with chains around their neck. They're all called the Sacrificia, and they all get led into the trial after investigating for like 24 hours before. And there's 300 jurors that get basically called into the carnival too, and they all vote on who, which sacrificia they think is the actual membrum. Yes. That person and then just a couple more details. You have an ad. The membrum has an hour to kill between um, 2 and 3 a.m. Yep. You have to solve the and vote for the membrum within an hour. Um, so the trial only takes place within an hour. It starts exactly at midnight. Um, so basically, as soon as it happens, you get zapped in, and the 300 jurors are random, so they don't know. You don't basically can't sway the jury. Um, and then that's Oh, and the investigation it. piece, too, I want to add. Um, each investigation, like there's newspaper articles, and each each one, if you want to dive further into it, takes an allotted amount of time. Since you only have so much time until the trial begins, you have to choose carefully that you're investigating the right people so you have the right pieces of evidence to put up during the trial. Well, I didn't use that much evidence during the trial, to be fair. Yeah, to be honest, it's 
it's kind of just like smoke and mirrors. It's not like a really actual cool and interactive gameplay element like we were hoping for. So that kind of kind of drops things down for us as far as a score for the game. Yeah, just in comparison. So in Ace Attorney, you are collecting and when you look around and you find evidence, you actually present a lot of the evidence um, throughout. Sometimes you just have evidence that you're not going to use and then it can be used against you while you're playing the game, but it is typically used. What I found during the trials is sometimes you would just use one piece of evidence and that was kind of it and it made the rest kind of pointless. Right, and another thing that I prefer in other games, um, like Family Code Detective Club, I think that's what it's called. Don't come for me if that's not it. I haven't played it in a while, but you actually discover the evidence yourself. You go into a room and you see things that look off or you hear certain things in conversation and you mark it yourself as evidence. Yeah. Whereas in this, it just goes straight through and it just tells you, oh, evidence was acquired. And it, it does all of the work for you, basically. Which, I mean, that's fine I, if you're not into it, but it's like, why did you even make it? Yeah, anything? the gameplay element is actually kind of important for this kind of things because the way that it came across when we first ever even played, and we even talked about it again in our last video about Even If Tempest, is that it would definitely change the game if it was truly this like gameplay element, but really it's just kind of set in stone yeah um, so that plays later already you can see like the things that we're most excited about just kind of fall by the wayside like the first thing that we were excited about with voltage is they usually do a shorter more concise prologue and then you get to choose a character and from there like it's really like what you want to do and it's more focused on romance so already the prologue was extremely long as this whole video so far has basically been us breaking down the prologue um and we're not even quite done there's one last final piece that happens um two the gameplay element was not monumental really it was really lackluster um but yeah so once you get voted for um before we go into the other pieces of it conrad looks at you gives you this evil glint in his eye and is like you are going to the pits of hell and they burn you alive yeah and it's very dark she talks about like too much in detail about her flesh burning and stuff like that yeah, and it's just wants. so gross i'm like ugh, so dark and depressing apples. um and then she appears in this area that is like a milky way of a sky with like a bookcase it very much reminds me of when you meet orion and amnesia memories um but yeah you meet this character named rune who kind of reminds me of orion and amnesia you can see a little inspiration was taken there and rune basically describes that you're going to get a second chance at life and he's going to give you the fatal rewind and basically with that you can choose to go back at this time to any point in time because it's the first time you're using it and like to choose wisely and then stop giving that control you just like bye yeah it like goes less and less after that but Basically, she decides she's going to go back to when she was 10 years old, um, which was right before the stepmom kind of got integrated into the family. Um, and it was old enough to where she could then decide to leave and go work at a nunnery for like a year. And then she goes into knighthood because she wants to be very strong. She's like, my new life is going to be me being strong. I'm not going to be weak. I'm not going to let Conrad do something like this to me again. I'm not going to get burned at the stake. I'm going to get my revenge. Yeah, so. revenge is like what she thinks. She starts off the game being like, revenge is my sole purpose for using this Fatal Rewind. Yes, so then it launches you into, you have two choices you can choose between Tyrell and from Conrad. I know I've seen a lot of guides and saying- You mean Cryus? Cryus, who did I say? Conrad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although <laughs> some of you are like Conrad route, like no. No, sweetie. Get it together, sweetie. No. So it basically is we're gonna launch into now the love interest. They, there are guides out there that say you can pretty much play Tyrell or Conrad. Oh my god, I'm gonna just keep saying Conrad. Cryus, <laughs> or personally, I'm gonna tell you, don't do that. Play Cryus. Play Cryus first. Play Tyrell. Obviously, if you're watching this, you don't care because we're just telling you stuff. <laughs> we're just telling you everything. So I'm just letting you know if you haven't played, I'm giving you one last final warning. Do not watch the rest of this video. But yeah, anyway. so this would be the last point where it's like you're definitely not gonna get any major spoilers yes. from before but now from now on you are going to i before we jump into the actual characters though do we want to um talk about the setting and art really quick since those are still generic oh yeah so, so actually yeah this will not spoil you either settings and art so settings um the settings were basically you don't have a specific time frame they're not set up i can't we'll get into later why they actually set it up apparently now that knowing and playing the rest of the game it's on purpose it's very jankily done because you don't know this they don't actually explain it they just give you about two or three sentences as to explaining and kind of brushing it under the rug i would assume that you're between the 1700s and the 1800s um there's like airships there's trains um there's really there's no phones there's a newspaper obviously as far as the way it looks i think it's really pretty i really liked like the crystals that are everywhere um kind of jumping into the art there are very limited backgrounds it's very disappointing considering um if you watched our last video 
quite a chunk of money by Voltage was invested into this game, and it does not really show in the art. Um, and I know a lot of people, like art is subjective, and I'm not trying to bash the artist in any way. I just think that it is not up to par for like a console game for what they were going for. Yeah. It wasn't stylized enough to be more simple in a way that was like, oh yes, intentional. It just kind of seemed like it was just not quite enough there. Like it yeah. was not premium enough. Um, I'll put some pictures on the screen of like weird things, like kind of weird CG, so spoiler alert, like weird images that I think that are just a little bit, and maybe do a comparison to like an Ultimate game, for example. Like it's just not quite there. Um, and since they're charging a premium of $50 for this game, mm -hmm. I just think it's not okay. Like, yeah, I think <laughs> the art could have been stepped up a little bit more, maybe more, like, they, they, they try to go and give you more CGs, but they, there was, it just wasn't as much as I think that there could have been done. There should have been a little bit more backgrounds and stuff, so. That's yeah, and a lot of the CGs are, are very much just the, the characters drawn, and then they just put the CG in the back, which is kind of like a mobile game move. Um, not a bad thing, but if you're trying to charge $50, it's like maybe give me a full art piece. Um, and then also with the backgrounds, there are very limited backgrounds. It's a very obvious very early on, like there's only a couple places we can go in the town and the backgrounds, they just use them for things that don't really make sense. I also want to talk about the placement of art. Um, they have like when you first meet Conrad and Parker, they're basically just floating in the sky. It's weird. Um, we'll put that image on screen. Weird. Um, and there's other areas where it looks like they're floating in the sky. They put two sprites on the on the plane where they should have flipped them because of the way their hands are. Like Lucian's always grabbing every character's butt. I'll put a whole reel of that on here. Um, there's something else too. Um, something that I didn't like when they do the transition from the day to like basically the nighttime for like the trial. There's never like a sunset. I don't know why, but that bothers me. They do me. not. Have sunset even us like very very limited budget not even one percent of what they spent on this game and we have sunset variation for everything yeah, so it's and not, it fades better it's they always do like this black bar i just feel like it's not that nice yeah they could do better so um i also say sometimes the mechanics in it because it's so specific it's mechanics yeah it's so specific like when something's transitioning if you hit the button it actually seems like your game is freezing um, and it actually does freeze sometimes and it just closes the game or and it crashes it still does your save data is gone so we'll actually get, i will we can talk more elaborately like i feel like at the end because it's just more contentions of things that aren't specifically with the inside the game but the kind of the overall experience. yeah the mechanics because like um just to explain the layout of the game it is the common route and then each route has four chapters um, and then they long as hell. yeah, they're long. They're more like acts. I'll call them four acts. And then the fifth act is really just like an after story. It's much shorter than the other acts. Gets unlocked after you have played through every single character. Yes. So and yes. accessing those is not very convenient. And we can kind of touch on it more at the end. But it was basically my game glitched in a way that I can't I can't play the final after story again. Like because it will not remember certain things unless I basically restart the entire game. It's just very frustrating. I think they should have had character screens that had a little bit about the characters like they do in all the other Voltage games. And there was like a, an after story for them there. And it just becomes unlocked once you meet the requirements. And then it's good from then on out. You also, um, so one of the cornerstones that I like about Voltage is that you can pick who you want to be like basically with. Um, yes, and this that's is something it. we thought they would do. But you didn't. can't do it, and the reason why is because technically it's a linear story. Which, when there is a no. linear story, just just being matter of factly, that actually eliminates the. I guess it's not an ultimate game. It's not an ultimate game because the love interest means that only one of them is a true, and they forcibly make it that there's one true love interest. They can do the after story where they can kind of mix it around, but that actually makes the other ones almost. That one was very much pointless and it's super hurtful to story writing, in my opinion. Yeah, That's it's very it. much to us. We consider this to be a visual novel with a light, 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 light um, gameplay element. Yeah, so with that, so I, um, when we were going into it, they basically give you a choice between Tyro and Cryus and And really, I like that it's tarot cards. I will say that. The actual, whoever did the UI, the UI is really beautiful. Yeah, the UI is really cute. I don't think it's a good UI, but... 
I didn't, I will say, when I, play, I played Ty Rails first, she played Cryos's first, and I knew details about Cryos, about things that Cryos went through that get revealed in Cryos's route. So when I played Cryos's route after, I already knew. It was very hard. And I will say, just being very frank, it was very hard to, for me to get through this game. I was not engrossed in it. Even and just know, the first route we did. Yeah, the first route, it just wasn't, and again, I will just be frank, I'm not a uber duper fan. I, I've, I've played Pio Fiore, I've played certain darker games. I'm not super into all of them all the time. So that is not always my element, my genre. That is what it is. But I wanted to give this a chance because I really, it's weird because I love Don Rumpa. I love Ace Attorney. So I thought this would yeah. be something like that. And it just also happens to have Ode to me on it. I'm a voltage, I love voltage games. And I so. think if you're going to pick a dark concept, the dark concept that you're going to get these ladies with is going to be witches and tarot. That's yeah. so cool. Um, we love that kind of stuff. And Very. they just watched it. Like there's certain, like we're definitely, you know, we're slice of life. We like fluffy games, but I don't want that to take away from our opinion on this because we really gave it a fair shot. And if you watched our initial like first reactions, we did come in a little bit like, mm, I don't know, but then we were so excited. Yeah. And like, I'll say, I always say that we will always give, no matter what game we try, even if it's not usually like our first go-to, I'm always going to go in with it with a clear mind and going in with this clear mind. It was so hard for Kayla and I to finish the game. We were literally texting each other. Like maybe we should just stop. Like you stop playing with Tyrell and then I'll stop with Christ. We can just make you do that and then we'll do a video. But we were just like, no, we need to play the whole game. Like we, we paid for it. $50, $100 between the both of us. And like for a game that crashes, the art is a little bit subpar and limited. It, it's a very convoluted storyline. It's linear. It's a visual novel. It's not even ultimate. It was just so frustrating. And also, we like ride for voltage. Like nobody rides for voltage. Everybody is an ultimate stand, and everyone's like voltage is like cheap and whatever. And like we just ride for it so hard. So this would have been something that we would want to work out. And it just, and it did, just it. did it. And it made the disappointment almost that much worse. Yes. So you, she, we when you go, we'll just jump right back and in, back into um, Cryus's route. So just if you want to give basically a description of what Cryus yeah. looks like. All that other stuff, so. I'll give a quick, like, very brief overview of it as brief as I can make it, and then we're just gonna comment basically what we feel about the route together. Yeah, so Cryus, he is what I would consider to be my type to a T. <laughs> He's a little bit older than the MC, like, by how many years? Like, six years, seven eight. years? Oh, eight years. Okay, <laughs> woo, me like lowering it. <laughs> but I like the teacher routes, I like all of that stuff. So, and Kyosuke from our game, like, the boss, that is like a kind of route that I like, and Cryus is kind of basically that. He's kind of her boss. So, so they work in the knighthood together at the beginning of the route and he is the commander and she is an up-and-coming knight. He is tall, brown hair, green eyes, he's very charismatic, caring, charming, um, but not like overly flirtatious. He's yeah. just like an all-around good egg. So I was excited to play his. Um, my first initial thoughts when they launched it in, because they launch it in and you're basically fighting and Christ kind of is like, yeah, we're gonna have you fight in this next battle that's coming up. And that's really important because if she does well in this battle, she becomes a full-fledged knight. Mm -hmm. And that would be the youngest woman ever. I think maybe even the only woman ever. Only woman. Only is a huge accomplishment. And she gets put up for it by Christ and he's really impressed with her. Um, and so she gets to do that. She's training super, super hard. And in her mind, all she's thinking about is I need revenge. This is gonna get me one step closer to revenge. With this, I can get closer to the castle and like do whatever I need to do with Conrad. She doesn't necessarily say she wants to kill him, but that's kind of the vibe I got. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so with that, that's kind of how his route starts. Then the first trial that occurs, Maya, her, um, her maid, her trusty maid ends up passing away and she kills herself multiple times to try and change the outcome, but it only makes it worse, and she becomes one of the Sacrificia. And it's in a locked room situation, um, so it's basically her and Maya together in a locked room, and Maya dies, and she's basically dismembered and all over the room of the apartment, and the only person that could possibly do it without magic, you would think, would be Anastasia, the main character. So that's kind of her first trial for that. They go through it. I don't know if we want to get to, should I just give full details of it or what do we think? Yeah, because we're going to comment on them. Yeah, so. so you kind of have to know the details. <laughs> so basically, he decides he's going to help her out with the investigation. He stands by her through that. So that's kind of a sweet um, moment for them. Um, and then 
yeah, they go and investigate, and one of the people that you choose to investigate is Orla, which is your previous stepsister. And I guess she's still your stepsister, but you just don't really know her as well. Like, you don't have the same relationship you did in the prologue where she was, like, torturing you her whole life. You go to um, investigate with her, and she says something key that tips you off that she's a murderer. She basically says that she has been abused by the Eve, we'll call her Eve, yeah. um, since in your steed. So you start to feel really bad for her, and then she says, the only thing that gives me solace is decorating. I just love decorating. And she seems like a little crazy too. So crazy decorating in despair. There were limbs of Maya's decorated around the apartment when you woke up. So that was kind of like the key word there. You still go on and investigate with everyone else, get into the trial. And one of the other sacrificia is actually Lucian. So the prince. Yes. And what's interesting about this is when you get there, Lucian decides that he's gonna do something for you. You know, he's really gonna do something for you. He's worried that you look so obvious as the membra since you were in the locked room situation that he's just gonna take one for the team, say he is the membra, and then kill himself. And then that, it'll save you, right? Perfect. So he <laughs> literally looks her in the eye and is like, I got you. You know what I mean? Like, do this for me. And she's like, what? And then he- I would have said, what too like literally oh. he kills himself and then that sets off orla it actually does help i guess in a sense because then orla's like oh my god he killed himself for you i like lucian why would you do that and that's why i went and killed maya so she basically gives herself away as the yeah. membra um so that's kind of how that trial goes down in the inner midst of things don't remember the exact order of everything uh Cryus is having you work with the what are they called again the gar Garuda? Yeah. Yeah, the Garuda birds. Um, they're these huge, big animals that work with the knights. You go and help Huma, this one that's being really difficult. You end up finding out that she was pregnant, um, which is a huge thing, because they didn't understand why she was acting weird. So you get a lot of accolades for that. Because she's the first time in 26 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in her mints between this, you start to kind of have a little date with Rias for that, which was weird, it was super awkward. I don't know if we want to get into that after during our thoughts, but yeah. basically he asks her on a date, she, he picks out a dress for her. That's like the one like romantic moment that happens. And I just remember like thinking that they were moving too quickly because it felt like he was already in love with her from the start of the route. And my thoughts were basically, why didn't they do flashbacks to when they first met? Like, why didn't they have all these moments like leading up to like how he felt for her? Then I realized they first met when she was 11. <laughs> so that would have been disgusting. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, uh, where was I? So that happens. And then the bird, when it gives birth, the feathers change colors. So that's something really interesting that happens. It's important because mm -hmm. Rice is sick and needs red feathers. They don't actually explain anything of how it works out. Yeah, another thing that she was mentioning to me that I kind of forgot about is like, things that was happening with Christ is he seemed like a womanizer. Like that was kind of the talk of the town and you're kind of wondering why? Cause he doesn't seem to actually have interest in women. He's just like, courting them and stuff for some weird reason. He's flirty. Even your stepmom, Eve, he gets into a car with her and you're like, oh, so that's how it is. <laughs> but then you find out that he's sick and he's flirting with these women basically to get money to try and help with the research for the disease. So he only, he's specifically choosing women that have interest in it and Eve has interest in it because she has the same disease as Cryus. Anyways, the bird's feather changes colors and that special color of the feather is the cure, the medicine, he gets cured. And then what happens after that? Cause I can't really remember the ending of his route. Um, I know I hated it. Basically you, um, so like you get another power unlocked after the trial, which can let you see into the past. And this leads you to the past to see um, a young nun back in the day and then she um, kills herself. And so you're like, oh my gosh, I think that that was Cryus and I need to save him or tell him. And so Cryus is like, um, like doesn't really say anything about it. Um, your friend Lance has been sick. So you have three little friends, Mitchell, Landon, not Lance, and <laughs> Hugo. They all are super duper proud of you. So anyway, Landon has a weird obsession with Maya and Anyway, so this he's is gonna really get upset when she dies. Yeah, she's he's super upset when she dies. Um, Mitchell really doesn't give a crap, and Hugo, um, you accidentally mentioned the previous dream, and you're like, oh my gosh, I think, and nothing. She knows that 
the nun was being raped by the cardinals and that was um Christ's sister she mentioned it to Hugo Hugo not Hugo <laughs> Hugo who is um the son of one of the cardinals and also remember Hugo Landon and Mitchell they all love Christ because that's their commander right and he just got promoted to grand commander so they would also do anything for him that's an important fact so Landon is gone and Hugo basically is pops off and murders the cardinals and this is the your mc witnesses this whole thing and Cryus basically decides to be noble and says i will just take responsibility you live and continue on and hugo's like hugo was pretty much down for it low-key because hugo was planning to also off himself but if he did that it would lead the commander to look very very suspicious yeah so the whole thing he did made he was doing it for Cryus because he loves Cryus and like that's like the g and he does it for him but the thing is the only person that it would look like did it is Cryus because he's the one with the motive like no one would really think like oh there's somebody who was just like so ride or die for him that he did it like yeah it doesn't connect like that the way that he thought it would connect so Cryus is like it's okay sweetie like i'll just die so the mc <laughs> is like no i have to protect protect um Cryus. so he goes out in the town to basically find other witnesses and, and to find i think hugo's disappeared at this point find hugo to figure to find everybody else to prove Cryus's innocence landon comes back and says i will help you and she of course trusts landon because they're besties and they go off and they're on this these steps and out of nowhere this was crazy out of nowhere landon stabs her and is like you're the reason why my the love of my life is gone and i can't believe this and what saves her from being stabbed she is still dying is Cryus. and throughout the whole thing Cryus is very protective of her and his route entire everybody's route he's very protective of her so this isn't shocking that he comes oh shit mr endy we totally forgot about that oh we'll circle back to him okay so anyway Cryus saves saves her and then they basically run off to the woods together instead of getting help Cryus then explains to her that he actually made a deal with the witch um i don't know what the deal is i don't remember what the deal was either way basically the witch said that he had to be the memram and kill somebody and like Cryus was like no Not one gonna doesn't do that. and yeah. so Cryus um actually is, is dying so yeah he starts started, turning like they tell each other that they love each other as Cryus is dying. She's also dying as well. Um, so she figures, well, now that I'm dying, I can just go back in time and save Cryus. And yeah, that that's kind of it. That's how his route ends. Um, and I mean, I, dead ends, but there's like sorry. bad ends in the. Sorry, we're filming this at night, by the way, guys. So it's like <laughs> getting dark and stuff. Um, and it might storm as well. So just excuse that. But yeah, there, at the, there's bad ends and dead ends that stop in the middle. But it's either the sad love end or that which is the better end for that will unlock the after story after and i was just like after i played that i remember texting you and being like i don't i don't know if i can continue and i did it for another month we like slammed the rest of it this last week yes but something though that was very key and critical that we missed yes is only a, critical in his route though it's only critical in his route but it's critical in the prologue too is this very scary creepy character named mr, mr. Andy. andy mr andy's actually a woman just gonna spoil that right now yeah it's female mr thing. andy's a woman so basically this is kind of sideshow bob clown looking thing and when you're going to the tavern to meet um, Tyrell, um, Cryus, you're trying to bring them like some meat or and something. And possibly Zen, yeah. If you're going to bring this like alcohol, whatever it is, and you get into it with a drunk person, you walk outside, and when this happens, you are instantly murdered by Mr. Andy. And he is your life every single yeah. time. Just like basically it takes his little flap and shoves it through you. It's yeah. insane. It was so scary though the first time it happened. It just and like the head like screen. twists. And I also want to be clear, like when we say it's a woman, there's not like a woman inside of the costume. Like, no, this is the entity. It's just a female entity. Um, so Cryus ends up fighting at Mr. Andy. Um, and that's kind of it. And he yeah, wins. Yeah, was that when... Is that why Zen was mad? Like that was like the perfect timeline because Andy was Oh yeah, mad. so Zen is also throughout the route. It's a very important thing. Zen knows that you can fatal rewind and Zen has had it with you doing the fatal rewind a bunch of times. Oh, he's had it. Zen <laughs> actually we'll says, him, but... Zen says multiple times, stop doing this. Please stop doing this shit. And Andy actually kills the Rich of Ruin, which is what you want the entire time. Yeah, there's like and... like twist of fate where the witch of ruin appears in front of you and then indy like slices it like yeah. it's perfect and, and that so, never happens again so then she's like no i gotta save christ and i can't let maya die that's it and yeah, so she fatal rewinds she screws everybody over by that happening by the way like yes it is very devastating that maya died it would be very devastating that Cryus is possibly going to be executed i'm not saying that what i am saying though is that it is the idea of like maya is 
gone. That's it. You actually killed yourself a bunch of times. I really don't like how often they go into like her talking about dying. Her so oh, yeah, casually that one killing. specifically is the worst at that crisis. She, yeah, she casually just talks about the idea of just killing herself and it's fine. And like My, how she's gonna do it and how it's not that bad. Like definitely if you have any suicidal ideations, you don't play this game. Because it's like goes into detail about like it almost is like her self talking like how it's gonna be okay and the best thing to do is kill yourself. And with her like I would assume too when Maya dies or keeps dying every time you do this, maybe it's not gonna work out the way that you want it to. Like, stop. You can't prevent it. You just proved you couldn't. So with that, that was how Cryos was. Do you want to give any other thoughts specifically on Cryos? I just, I felt like the the small bits of romance and like the date was cute or whatever. I just it felt don't. off-putting though because the route was so intense and it's like, why are we shopping for a dress right now? I don't think, like, yeah, like some, that, my best friend just died. Yeah, I think another thing that was a little weird it's just the dynamic. This is usually my favorite type of route, right? He's a little bit older. He's like super nice. He's just like my perfect personality and type. But the way that they did it, they just didn't do it good for me. Like yeah. to me, especially cause she's just, she's just 18. Like I like an age gap, but I like the person to be of age, like that you're supposed to be self inserting to. And I like the person that you're self inserting into to be the one to make the move. Cause I think it's weird if the older person does it. Yeah, I just think that it was could have been just done a lot better in my opinion. And you also need to meet after 18. And I, feel, I feel like the fact that he knew her from when she was 11 really gets me. Like, yeah, that's I forgot weird. about that. So it makes it kind of like, he kind of bum rushes her into it and like very not, it was off putting to me. Yeah, calling ourselves out the whole time we were like, oh, we cannot wait to basically slam and be like, they should have gone over it in more detail. Oh yeah, I forgot. They should have had flashbacks and like shown all their cute romantic moments from the past. And I'm like, there were none. When, the second we saw the line where he was like, oh, I was 11 or something like that when I met you, I was like, <gasps> yeah, so <laughs> she dies and she fatal rewinds and this launches you into Tyrell's wrath. If you do Tyrell's first, it actually launches you into the other, like it is what it is on that sense. She forgets a lot of what happens with Cryus and like the feelings that she really had towards him. It's like this whole brand new thing and she decides to go and be um, an inquisitor. Oh, wait, 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 actually it opens up. She's like, okay, like I'm gonna get it right this time. Walks through, she goes down to the church's basement and she and it immediately opens to Tyrell whipping and torturing Cryus. Cryus oh, is like- Oh, him not being able to feel any pain, it didn't matter that he was getting whipped. I thought that was Zen. No, Zen doesn't, is immortal. It oh, Christ Christ can't, can't, feel pain? can't feel pain. That's part of his disease. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> I should have known that before, but I didn't. So Tyrell would have known that, and that's why he was doing it. Okay. Ooh, point one for them. I'll give him that. We forgot to mention I'll give that. Give them that. Cries can't feel pain. So Cries can't feel pain. That's the other thing. Tyrell and Cries are like homies. Yeah, they're good homies. Like they're always like chopping it up at the bar and stuff. But um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I liked playing Tyrell's after Cries if she gets a little bit more witch powers as it goes on. So Cries, she has a nun. Tyrell, she's gonna get a, like something and then it goes up from there. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, I'll have you explain Tyrell. Tyrell. So Tyrell is whipping Cries, which why Cries basically has to act the part that it hurts, but it, it obviously doesn't hurt because he feels no pain. And that's why Tyrell would do it. I know, but I guess in that timeline, he can't let people know that he feels no pain because he can't let people know about his disease. So he's just like, is putting on a show, I guess. I see why they call him fake. Ooh, yeah, why they be calling him fake makes a lot of sense. Cause they Maybe he fake. tells Tyrell though, they never actually say and it would be really cool for them to, him to know. So anyway, you're like, what's going on? Like, why would you do this? And they basically say that um, Prince Lucien at this point has died. And uh, he, he dies goes out early a lot. And fast, constantly. So you're like, <gasps> Prince Lucian, who I don't care about in any capacity, is dead. And yeah, like, you're like, not even honest with that talk. It's crazy. <laughs> you're like, anyways, young. <laughs> and then, so then you're like, oh my gosh, like, no way. And so then um, Tyrell's like, yeah. So she basically, Tyrell leads her to the water and says, like, why don't we investigate if I work under you? And he's like, finally, stupid. And it's like, nobody would get that. None, nobody. nobody. So anyway, I just want to give like a brief thing. Tyrell is actually really like shy around new people and stuff and gets kind of like choked up, but it's weird because they make his personality and other things that he's definitely a ma or a sadist in things. And instantly hates people, like so yeah. it's weird. Cause they use a chair, uh, we'll put it on the screen. There's something that he says and he says that he has a cucking chair and I'm like, no. 
Yeah, nah. they take it a little too far. Nah. And it doesn't seem like that's, like, especially, like, in his after story, he didn't seem like that at all. He's not ready to leave all of that behind. He's not anyways. Like that. So, anyway, so you go along and you're working with Tyrell, and so you're like, we're gonna, we're gonna save Cryus. And Tyrell acts like he doesn't care, but he definitely does. Kind of reminds me of Daichi. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's like Daichi and Kyosuke, but, like, not as good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, they are going around and investigating, and basically, like, they go and check out. And the first culprit that they think, and he's also um, a sacrificia, um, is Conrad, of course, because that would make the most sense. That like, Conrad would probably kill Calusian, his brother. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know why they think he won't, like, later on. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Cryus and him basically had the apparent beef, but they didn't really. Who was the other one? Oh, and then there was a little boy who was on this list. So, like, oh my god, another cute... I'm sorry, we're going to go super off tangent. Yeah, this is a podcast. When the Witch of Ruin comes up, he actually disguises himself and tricks you. This is like the dunce in her. She disguises himself as this guy, this painter, who Kayla hates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he carries this giant brush. And it's an, if they put him on the wrong side of the screen, which they often do, because they just <laughs> didn't care about quality control, his giant paintbrush is literally bigger than my face. It'd just be... Like, if I was him, like, as a sprite, it would just cover yarn. Like, it's so annoying. So, he disguises and says that he's your long-lost brother. She doesn't question it too much at first. And As she's like, goes, oh, yeah, you're right. She said, yeah, I do remember Big Brother Ma- Maisie. <laughs> like, that's basically what it is. And it's like, okay, just want to very, very much say, your stepmom never brings it up. Your dad never brings it up. Or, like, at least would shove it in your face. Why wouldn't you ask Maya? Like, she doesn't ask any questions. Then finally, she's like, Wait a second. You're tricking me. And then the Witch of Ruin comes out. And then they and show he, you his face at, when you first enter Tyrell's um, route. And so yeah. it's really weird when they hide him later because it's like, I actually know exactly what he looks like. They actually show him a lot. And Tyrell's like, they show his like chin, like where he's yeah. like, like laughing. Yeah. They show that constantly. But then every, everywhere else, he's just like a black aura with like his eye. But it's like, we obviously know what he looks like. So stop. Like, what yeah, do you, you don't got to do that. That like, doesn't make any sense. But And then when they show him for the first time, she's like, oh my God, he's so beautiful. But it's like, you've been seeing him. I don't know. Voltage has a bad tendency to do that. Where like, when we were doing the Kiss by the Baddest Bitter, I remember when she's like, oh my God, I'm trapped in the elevator with Mr. Ichi and Nomiya. And he's just so gorgeous and wonderful. It's like... They didn't do that as much though this time. Like honestly, I think that was the only one that she commented on. Everyone else, she, she honestly doesn't care. All she cares about is herself. Like she, <laughs> she's just on her own shit. So but. yeah, so Tyrell, like so anyway, she's like working with Tyrell. She doesn't run into Zen at all. They actually scrap his ass. Like they 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 Jimmy Hammer him in. Like, oh, by the way, that's a word we made up. It's called Jimmy Hammer. It's when you just put something in that didn't need to be there. But. So anyway, so they go and investigate and. And Tyrell is basically in, like, yeah, me and him are cool and shit, but, like, we need to resolve this. And so, the, and the trial ends up, because um, Lucien's already dead, so he can't kill himself for you. Um, it's not Conrad, um, shockingly so. <laughs> what you find out, and actually, when, oh, you're God, doing the invest- so when you do the investigation, the child that you investigate actually tells you who the killer is right then and there. So, very much have to pay attention. It's the kid that killed that killed Lucien. How oh, he got into the castle, I do not know. But you go to a random vendor too, and it's like uh, this horse soup, and the guy's like, "Yeah, you know, because our saying that we have here in Historica is like, wh- whatever you eat, like you become. So like, if you eat the horse meat, you're gonna be able to run like a horse." That um, so Tyrell, so the kid basically says that he wanted to be like Prince Lucien because he didn't want to be in poverty anymore and be loved by everybody. Tyrell or whatever, um, when they're going to investigate, the Witch of Ruin basically is like, I want this game to be interesting. I don't remember the contract, but basically they had agreed to do this contract. And then the Witch tries to um, basically revoke it. And so then Tyrell needs to save Anastasia. I don't know why I said it like that because I'm thinking of Austin and Beverly Hills. Yeah. Anastasia. And so they give a CG where he's giving her like an antidote and kisses her because she's trying to save um, a child from dying. And then Richard Ruin is like, don't be trying to get in the way of my carnival, but the child is deranged. Just, didn't he say he was doing that to like test if she's a witch? And that's how he knew she was a witch the whole time? Yeah. Like they do this whole thing and then like basically they win. And when you win a trial, you get more powers. That actually gets slap bashed when you get into Zen's route, but okay. So then, um, wait, did we get into like what Sammy did? Yeah. So Sammy basically chopped up 
um, Lucian and then decided to bring him back to the orphanage to be served so that he can, if he absorbs Lucian, he can become the prince. Yeah, and you find that out in the trial because the question that's the topic that you need to bring up is like, what did you do that morning? And he says that he prepared um, basically human stew. Yeah. So, yeah, so then yes, he so that was, um, disgusting. It was really dark. I really I turned off the game for a while because I was like, that's super dark. Wow. It just makes you feel wow. like you want to throw up a little bit, you know? Yeah, and the, just, it's the detail that they go into. Because, like, even us just saying that now, you might be like, okay, like, yeah, that's really awful. But, like, imagine them talking about it for, like, a few paragraphs, you know? Yeah, it gets really bad. So then you go back and you and Tyrell kind of hug it out and, like, talk about how stressful that was. Oh, I can't and you even notice, get into how I feel about the end of Tyrell's. You notice this, like, little heart thing or this little flower thing. And you're like, that's such a pretty flower. And you want to learn more about Tyrell. And so you guys kind of just talk and stuff. And then um, you um, are just going on your day to day, and like all of a sudden you hear about this like ninja, and everyone's like ninja. Have you read into the ninja before? Because when the party happens, when Lucian dies, you see the ninja, you just don't see their face. Yeah, it's like a dark shroud. So um, you start learning that there's this key to possibly helping you uncover the witch, which is called the Ishik Clan. You want to know about the Ishik clan. You have Maya. It's like come. a plant too, right? Yeah, it's a plant. And then you think that this is a woman that you're looking for. You have Maya come and help you look. I don't think that cries helps you. No, I think what you decide to do is you're like, Tyrell would do it. This is the thing that's weird because they try to make his personality all gruff and tough, but MC instantly is just like, yeah, he's a super nice guy and he would pretty much do anything for me. Even he though folds we barely so know each other. quickly. So she asked Tyrell who would be able to do this and he kind of agrees. But, but well, first he's like, let's pretend we never talked about this. Yeah. But then he goes and helps. Oh, and then he's, she starts working with Mitchell, right? Yeah, and Mitchell don't, does not trust. Um, <laughs> Mitchell doesn't trust. Tyrell because Cry has told Mitchell to go work with them because he's jealous. So he's like, go work with her. And see what's going on. Like, yeah, they, good oh, was I good forgot him. like there's this whole flirtation between Cry and MC in the beginning of time. Yeah, and so she like slaps Cry in the face with it. She's like, he's like, you can come with me or you can go with Tyrell. And she's like, Tyrell. <laughs> Bye. I wonder what happens if you like Cry just ends. <laughs> just that's it. So then Mitchell's like, I don't trust, but then she starts, like, the power after the trial comes up, she can see into the future, kind of. Oh, she starts having premonitions. Yeah, so she has point. premonitions about things. She actually sees a woman with brown hair actually getting crushed, and she sees Mitchell being like, oh my god. Like, yeah, so she prevents somebody from dying. And so then there's a hit out for this one, like, another woman that's in the route. And so then, yeah, it's that same woman. So they go to go get the woman, and then she basically saves them. And Mitchell and her have a conversation. And she's like, "We, this woman should not be getting tortured." Mitchell and her make a plan. They're like, "We're gonna go out to this guy. If we get this information from this boss guy, that he's obviously just telling all of any woman that denies him, he says is a witch." And that's basically what happened to her. So they're like, "We're not gonna let this stand." Tyrell says he's not getting involved. She asks him, and he's like, "No, I'm not doing it." So she goes along with Mitchell, and they're like, "Okay, let's wait. Let's wait." And then out comes ninja that's where it is and so then she but she doesn't know that it's tyrell yet so she goes back to confront like <laughs> so pretty, obvious pretty much that it's him and then he, she walks in and she knows that conrad's like in on it or something and she basically it's like first of all when you are going to start snitching on things maybe check your surroundings try it out she walks in and she's like sees him in his like ninja gear and i wanted to say he's so much hotter in his ninja outfit i was like zing, it is in full zing. color it's not just the dark shroud anymore like it's very clearly him and she's just like wow ninja she doesn't even think title. <laughs> and he's like kind of like so she basically is like oh i don't remember at what point in time no that's not totally so anyway she's like conrad's in on this like i know you're ninja but like we need to talk and then conrad is like got your ass like basically like it's it's like on candid camera almost the feeling and conrad basically holds her up and is like you're coming with me slim she's like i see that that's the ishik flower isn't it you're ninja and you're the ishik clan and then conrad's like yep <laughs> and because but he already knew though the whole time yeah but he didn't know that the flower was so he took the flower and smashed it right in front of tyrell yeah. and tyrell got on the floor and started crying because that's his last living ishik re like relic yeah maybe like see if there's seeds or something so you can plant more i know like maybe like figure that out genetically <laughs> tyrell is like so distraught about it but he doesn't have a choice 
because he feels like it's his duty by um the power of like the goddess to serve the royal family yeah because that's the whole thing it's like she sees the ninja helping conrad and also helping that woman so she's like and also ninja's always in the new news for being a do-gooder so she's like obviously tyrell's a good person like i knew it but then she's like but also sus because he's helping conrad she basically is in the castle i can't remember why conrad wants her at the castle i really don't remember why he wants like some truth serum to say stuff i don't actually recall that they like either. shoot her with truth serum which whatever fine and then basically she's like drugged but she's not a liar to begin with so like she's not not telling the <laughs> she's truth never lied. Like, i mean i'm sure she's lied but like i think there's like one thing she wasn't telling him but like to be very frank she wasn't like hiding anything yeah, she, she was just the beans immediately <laughs> she's actually good for that so then basically what one thing that really pissed me off is that like it was very much jimmy hammered in my opinion like they try to say that like Conrad has so um Tyrell's afraid of snakes so Conrad gets a snake to basically say it to lord it over um Tyrell to make Tyrell do his bidding but it's like he already was doing that he didn't need yeah because they, they were trying to I guess justify it from the MC's perspective because like immediately when she gets left alone in the room with Tyrell because Conrad just goes off to like sleep or something and like <laughs> Tyrell has to watch her because she's a prisoner now in the castle and she's like well, I know you wouldn't do anything wrong. He's like, you've seen me for who I am now, so you can stop liking me. And she's like, but I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Like, yeah, and he shows her his tattoos. It definitely gave me Horemiya vibes. Yeah, he so looks like the, the main person, Horemiya. But she's just like, no, like, I, I believe you're a good person. And he, like, tackles her on the floor and is he's like, like, no, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> you don't know my life. I murder people. And she's just like, okay, like, I'm sure you have a good reason. Like, yeah, like, you're just doing this good. And he's like, leave me. And she's like, no. And so obviously he's not going to say what the good reason is. So the writers thought it would be fun to Jimmy Hammer in this snake plot that she's talking about now. It's crazy. Why did Conrad let her leave? Let her leave where? The castle, because the next thing that happens is that Maya kills her family. Oh yes, okay, mm -hmm. I remember. <laughs> I played this, so she, I played Cryos a month ago, she played Tyrell a month ago, and then this <laughs> week we both played the reverse and the rest of the route. Yeah. So it's kind of fresh in my mind. So basically after the snake incident comes out, Tyrell's like freaking out, goes Oh, she kills the snake. Yeah, she like, well she, doesn't even kill it. She just gets like a candlestick. It wraps around the candlestick and then she takes the sheet, ties it at both ends, and then it's still moving within the sheet just on the floor. And then Conrad comes in like an evil villain and explains exactly why he did it. He's like, yeah, because I found this guy. You were stuck in a hole for how long was it? Three days getting attacked relentlessly by snakes. Ha ha ha, wasn't that so funny that I saved you being the last member of the Ishii clan and you were getting destroyed by snakes and that's why you're so afraid of them. It was so Jimmy hammered in and she was just like, oh, that makes sense. She, he's holding that over his head. That's why he's doing bad things. Stupid. Anyways, then Conrad continues to explain that there is this special golden rose that he needs. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, it's all coming back and she basically, like her task is to steal the rose. Yes, because he's like, Eve took the rose and she hid it somewhere in the castle and she's like, I think I know where she hid it because no one would ever go into that dingy like attic that I was kept in. And this rose will basically prove that they're definitely the royal lineage of the family. Yeah, or prove that someone's not the royal lineage, vice versa. Yeah. I think they're trying to prove that Lucian wasn't. He was dead. Oh yeah, no, Lucian was dead. Why was he trying to do it then? Because it wasn't gonna work. He doesn't. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know his true goal to that. It didn't work out no matter Basically, what. Basically, he wanted this this family relic back because if you bleed on it with royal blood, all of a sudden these crystals start blooming, which is why there's crystals all over the town. So that explains that. She goes in to basically go and get said relic in that basement and she finds Maya covered in blood. She, but basically before that happens though, they say like to do this, like it's gonna be really high security because of like shit that's happening. And so like Maya, um, so then she wakes up the next day to go do this or she goes in to do it, but like it's really easy to get into the house to get the relic and she's like, what the hell? And why is it so easy? Cause Tyrell's tried like 10, 20 times and hasn't been able to do it. But yeah, so then she finds everybody dead. Her dad, Orla, her mom, her stepmom, the guards, everything, they're dead. Um, so then Maya basically openly admits it and she's like, yeah, I did it. And then yeah, it the, <laughs> the witch trial thing happened. She's like, I'm the member. Like I was driven mad crazy. And so they do. And then in the game, they have a very bad habit of, um, telling, not showing. So their whole goal in this whole thing is to prove that Conrad is actually not of royal blood. They figured this out pretty easily, I guess. 
and um, the king is how they did it, right? Because the king was at the trial. Yeah, they want to basically it. prove this, and so before they even do this, so they basically have a secret meeting to like make it so that the king has to prove that he's of true lineage. But the king pretty much knows he's not. I, I want to say. Yeah, the but, king knows he's not, but they they ask the witch to put the king in the trial, right? Yeah. Or no, 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 they don't have to because it's a sister. Wait. The Eve is the king's sister. Oh, yeah, so he's just so a he's suspect. Like, yeah. Okay. They also weirdly make a rumor that Eve and the king actually are banging. <laughs> and he at least says, I'm not... <laughs> I know this is a not an appropriate time to be this up. <laughs> but it's always in telling me in Philadelphia when Frank has to confront Dee and Dennis. And they're like, are you banging your sister? And he's they're like, no, I'm not banging my sister. And he's like, banging your sister is perverted. And he's like, I'm not banging my sister. And that's basically <laughs> what happens in the trial like the king's like i'm not sleeping with my sister like i just want her to be happy yeah um so anyway they're like if you're really truly meant to be the king or you're supposed to be the king like you will submit like your blood to this rose and it'll bloom really great and like at first he's hesitant but he's like nah 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 i'm gonna do it and then they do it and nothing happens to the rose and then they're like yes we found out you're not really truly meant to be the king down with the king and then maya's like okay cool now that we've wrapped that up i'm actually the member of peace Yep, instantly. So they kind of work together on that little plan. And then how does it end leading so, up to what happens? So then she basically, this is where, again, this casual thought that she's going to die. She doesn't want Maya to be dead. And this is where I feel deep down, truly inside, that Maya is actually the, <laughs> true, Maya's the true, Yeah, the true love interest because she goes hoard for Maya and I'm like there is no reason. Until she doesn't Zen. <laughs> like cast her aside when she meets Zen. Zen's one of so many funny moments of like shit where she's like no bro it's either you or me dog and I ain't never gonna be me. So anyway. They have so yes. many weird moments of like her and Maya cuddling in like a twin size bed. I don't know it's just it's interesting. It's so um so anyway she's Maya's like yep and then I, she's like I killed your family because I tortured you for years and I didn't like that. I don't like that she decided you know 10 years later to do this because at that point they didn't torture her anyway but whatever fine yeah so the trials didn't happen for 10 years and then all of a sudden they did i don't really get that but yeah so basically then my like maya goes into the inferno she dies and then the mc is like i can't live in a world without maya what i'm gonna basically do is going to off myself because i'm gonna make this right the second time around i also want to say that there's not a lot of thought process into her killing herself you don't know, like in your mind you can change the events but you cannot change how other people view and see things. Like, yeah. you can say, like, don't ever kill my family on my behalf. But it's like, but you wanted that. You wanted to do that. Yeah, so. wasn't that, like, your entire goal? And so then- the revenge thing actually never gets brought up truly. Like, in her mind, she'll make somewhat semi-comments about it. Like, could I do other things that make me happy instead of pursue my revenge? You literally haven't been pursuing your revenge this entire You've time. You've only been doing other things that make you happy. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want. It's fine. I'm not judging. I'm not saying you should go always go get revenge but girly like you're not doing it you and haven't. the one person like i get it, he dies early on the one but she never cares to be like you know lucian like my old childhood friend like i wonder how he's doing the one who saved me like yeah instead of focusing on that she focuses on like the mean people and wanting revenge not yeah. the good person but whatever so, mr indy by the way like the one that like just killed you in crisis route never comes again yeah. He never comes up again. Never. The only time he comes up is briefly in Tyrell's route, and it's it's just a mascot, just a children's mascot. It's and weird. he doesn't come up in Zen's route. No, not at all. Or Lucian's. No. He made it very important in Crisis. Yeah, they just kind of drop. They're it. like, Mr. Endy's above the witches, and you're like, is he? She? I don't want to misgender. She. But why Mr. Indy? <laughs> so then she basically is, once that happens and it's like all brought up and like Conrad and all of them are exposed, now Tyrell is like free to do whatever he wants. And so you And think, that's what she wanted. Yeah, she wants him to be happy and live a fulfilled life. So when the ending comes up and then she goes and finds. She has a little premonition. Yeah, she has a little premonition of him like sleeping. She thinks he's sleeping, but she's like, okay, they have like one last like little sweet moment where they kind of like hug or whatever. But then she's like, oh wait, I need to go back and see him one more time. She comes back into the church and sees that Tyrell has now killed himself with poison. He took some poison. It really did not under, I didn't understand. I just am kind of confused. So yeah, so. Anyways, we did not see it leading to that at all. And the craziest part of it all too, that I'm just now thinking of looking back on it, she's like, because you did this, everything I did for you is for nothing. Bitch, you're gonna rewind time again. So Every, everything you did was for nothing, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, she like was so <laughs> casually like, I'm gonna die and bring Maya back regardless. And it's like, I, I guess. And so she was mad at Tyrell, but it's like, I'm gonna be mad at you, so fine. She decidedly goes, she's like, now I'm gonna kill myself and fix everything. 
you were gonna do that anyway, but okay. Yeah, she was already planning to kill herself. Like the stuff with Ty, that's maybe why Tyrell killed himself because he maybe found out that she was gonna do that. Yeah, he knows she's a witch. She doesn't really say anything. So then he's like, I can live peacefully. And then basically the Ishik clan at that point when he dies is completely extinct. And it kind of just bam ends. Yeah, but it doesn't matter anyways because she's going to fatal rewind. And then she ends up in none other than mm-hmm. Zen's route. Zen's route was very interesting because it started out with Zen beefing with her. So just to give a character background. Zen is immortal and knows that she's doing the fatal rewind. Yeah, he's what we call an antigen. He somehow came into this timeline, even though he's actually from modern day, and he's just stuck there, constantly remembering every single thing that happens. When Can you dies. imagine going through the same day 150 times and you're just like, hmm. And you know that it's this girl doing it. And like, this, so his route is a chance for him basically to confront her <laughs> and be like, okay. And then they start working together. So his route is actually pretty good. Um, we can maybe try not to go as in depth because I know it's getting long. Uh, but what do we want to say about Zen? Um, so he definitely confronts her and makes good points. Like, okay, when the Witch of Ruin was murdered by Mr. Endy, maybe you should have left it there. I told you it was the best that you're going to get. And like calls her out and she's like, oh my God, he kind of calls her selfish. But then he admits that he was basically like listening to the Witch of Ruin for doing all this and like how awful she is. And she's like, don't be manipulated by him. And he's like, oh my God, you're right. And it's two dummies in the room pointing at each other. Who's the dumbest? <laughs> so anyway, she like is like, oh my gosh, like you've been immortal. And so she kind of feels bad about it. Like, dang, I've been making you live the same day. Yeah, like I've actually been real selfish. Um, so then they're like, let's fight together and defeat the Witch of Ruin. And like, that's the stupidest fucking thing to say. Yeah, because now all of a sudden, like this whole time, it's been Conrad and like Eve that she wants to get revenge on. From Zen's route on, it's the Witch of Ruin that she wants revenge she does, on. You do find out that the Witch of Ruin is not omniscient and that when you reset the timeline, the Witch of Ruin has no recollection of this happening. Yes. So they get a Zen's restart as well. for that. Yeah, so that's super helpful to know. And that like basically... Um, so basically when you're going in, the Witch of Ruin decides to get back at you because there's a contract formed with Zen. And so they're like, okay, cool. You got to make her like do this. So wait, what did Zen get out of that contract? Cause I know initially he, go he couldn't talk if to he, him. Yeah. If he does what the witch, like the way the witch said it, he can go home. But they changed it. He decides to forge a contract with her because she's also a witch. Yeah. And so then. It I was a little bit messy. Him not going home was a, I don't know what it was. So basically she becomes the membrane. Now, the first question Kayla and I had was like, oh my God, if she's a membrane and she doesn't want to go through with this, just don't kill anybody. But as you know now from Cryos' route, you actually doesn't matter because if you do that, you'll just die. Yeah, so you so, have to kill someone. At first they make it seem like she had like a really intense bloodlust to kill someone. Yeah. Um, but it like it gets knocked out really easily. Then it's just like, hey, maybe not. And she's like, yeah, you're right. Maybe not. So it's, it's not the bloodlust. It's just that she has to do it or else she will then die. And then, and so then the whole thing pointless. Yeah. So then they decide, why don't we just kill some strangers? Off the street, and they very they, quickly become like literally Bonnie and Clyde. Like, she does try to kill herself to get out of this at first, and um, she does it so wrong. Funny. And it's the cringiest, like trying to make it cute. Is that like she takes this long ass like sword and is like, I'm gonna kill myself and stabs herself, but she doesn't. She do doesn't it do it. Enough. Yeah, so she's just gonna suffer. And Zen is like, No, baby. Let me help you. Yeah, he says, leave this to me. I've got you. Next time you want to kill yourself, help. let me help you. I, it just wasn't... It, it wasn't really it doing what give. they thought it was doing. <laughs> I was one giving what it needed to give. So anyway, that occurs, and then she comes back, and the witch ruin is like, it doesn't matter that you're doing that. You're going to be the member of every time. Stop, stop doing that. And I just want to say, Zen's route, like, Zen's dialogue is probably the cringiest dialogue in the game. Yeah, like, at a point, he brings up himself playing basketball, and it was like, maybe not the time. Not the time. Yeah. So anyway, they kill this merchant guy who was stalking Maya and it's in the intent to basically this is what I'm saying where the trial gets reversed and how you win no longer makes any sense you want to win the trial by making sure you name the correct member in this case you want to frame everybody until you're the last one standing and then that way you get away with it I don't get why it doesn't make sense why you would but apparently if there's not two people not two sacrificia then you can't do a trial but then if they do that, then you would clearly be the killer because you're the only one left. So you must be the member. But apparently yeah. that just means you win because that's the witch's <laughs> game and that's how the witch likes to play it. So basically the first they kill this person off the street. She like stabs him through the heart and they're like, dude, only Zen makes, at least Zen is the smart one between the two of them. Cause Zen is like, dude, only a marksman to do something like that. Like somebody who's yeah, trained so in combat. Messier. So I'm just gonna stab him. But. 
Why, why doesn't she just go and kill Conrad or Eve? Also, why doesn't Zen ever become one of the sacrific- like sacrificia? When you think about it, he's helping kill and he doesn't get the chains. Maybe because he's an antigen. He was a sacrificio in um, Tyrell's. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't right. <laughs> Zen was like, why am I here? <laughs> Sometimes that is like, yo, I'm I'm here so I don't get fined. I forgot he randomly got picked as a he said it too. He said, why am I here? Because <laughs> he's on Dyro's route. Period. They just do it. So anyway, so then basically, um, she, they decide like they finally the the trial thing starts. She investigates and finds oh. out who the sacrifices are. are Cryo, but she's only invest investigating in order to see how she can frame somebody. Yeah. So the sacrifice like the sacrificia are herself, Cryus. Um, Maya and Lucien and then Conrad. So they're like the easy. So it's like in her mind originally she's like I'm gonna do Conrad, but Zen is like no, do Maya. She's kind of weak and she'll give it up. Yeah. So Maya's the only one after their investigation that makes any sense because yeah. she has a motive because this guy had been stalking. And her. she's technically the only one who's technically so Cryus knows knows deep down you're the one who did it. He just doesn't have. Um, factionable proof and he doesn't want like he wants you to tell on yourself which i just want to say please don't ask me to tell myself about a murderer i'm not gonna do it like yeah what? and right before like they, like she's feeling down right like she says in her head like damn like i'm gonna have to pin this on maya and like she's gonna have to go like and that's great because like, the whole reason that i keep killing myself is for maya <laughs> now i need to get her out now of i it. need to get her out so they have like a few minutes before the trial's gonna start or whatever because it has to start right at midnight and they're like hanging out kind of on this bridge and zen's like i used to play b well he's like talking about how he's immortal and that he's from present day and like he left a team hanging basically i'm assuming though that he's a professional athlete and that's what yeah. he's like fucking shitty and he's like he literally says like Which, if he is, word. i just want to say if he is and this is going to be very problematic if he is him being darker toned and tall and then being a basketball player is very stereotyped and i don't like that if that's the case i can't I not even that. think about that but you're right if that's the case i'm not saying that's a fact but that's how i would see it because zen is a per- like basically a person of color in this game and for him to play basketball seems a little and they have off, no need yeah. to jimmy him they never go back to the future or anything like that they never do anything that like would make it worth it so the fact that he was like i dribble and i shoot like, and, like literally she says that. cries about it because she's like i just feel so bad like but what about the fact that you're about to kill maya like you so don't feel then, bad about that anymore so now you feel bad about zen's b-ball team I so don't then know. the trial occurs and maya's voted off the island and she's Murdered, and, and she gives burnt. that look that like they all do, like when Lucien kills himself, <laughs> and he's gonna do it again. By the way, Miss Rock, what <laughs> kills me though. What kills me though is in Cryus's route when they vote for when Lucien decides to kill himself, the trial is going to end. They ask for an extension. When Maya dies, they're like, anyway, the membrum continues because they didn't vote for their correct one. So the so rules they, are changing. And they're like, eh. And, and they so kind of explain it, like, in the end, like, the witch can just do whatever he wants, basically. And that is what, like, it just, it's a way to just make plot devices and lazy writing. I think they should have had structured rules, but that's just me. Uh, Anyways, now they have to basically keep killing the rest of the sacrificio because they need to get down to just her. So they're talking about it in this, like, little open fucking pathway outside. <laughs> God, they're so crazy. And so they're like, who's the next one? They're like, well, we could do Conrad. But who comes around the corner? <laughs> and then they're like, we could do Conrad or we can do Lucian, but I don't want to. She's like, I don't want to kill Lucian, and I can't see myself killing Cryus. So they both agree, and they're like, Conrad. <laughs> like Conrad comes around, and I almost sympathize for him. Can you imagine hearing that you're about to be murdered? Literally, <laughs> he's like, knock knock, motherfuckers, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, and the thing is too. So like, it's supposed to be that if you're of the royal lineage, that you don't fall asleep. During oh, yeah. the membrum thing, you're supposed to be you're, protected overall, though. Which yeah, and so like that doesn't happen because they keep getting called into it. So you would think somebody would be like, "That's weird." It doesn't seem like you're protected <laughs> by the goddess. <laughs> so then nobody talks about it. it doesn't seem like any of us are so, the witches. And so in. then Zen knocks out um, Conrad, and then knocks out um, Conrad's guard. But I legitimately did feel bad for Conrad in that moment because yeah. he just he comes around the corner very quietly, like. Are you seriously about to murder me? Wait, so how did Cryus go then? Because they vote. So when Conrad is killed, Cryus is voted oh, as yes. the killer. So then it's literally just Cryus, Lucian, and MC, So Cryus right? knows what's T, and so does Tyrell. Because I know they talk about it. I know they were like sending each other little letters. Because Tyrell, they, they don't know 
any, they don't have any memories from when they're around. Oh, wait, 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 actually, I'm, I'm mistelling it. Cryus was going to be the one that they were killing because they were contemplating between Conrad and Cryus. But they were like, if we kill Cryus, then we can easily just go kill Conrad. Yeah. And so then Conrad was like, shit. So then they have to kill Conrad. They don't have a choice now. And then they like kind of missed their opportunity to kill Cryus because then he's not in his office. Oh, no, no, no. Then the witch changed the rules and won't let them kill two people. Oh, Okay. So this, I know they kind of directly kind of had it stolen from Danganronpa. So a cool rule in Danganronpa, you can actually kill up, only kill up to two people. However, if one person kills somebody else, you can't do anything else. Yeah. So that's basically what happened. So basically that occurs, they kill, they kill two people, so now they can't kill somebody else. Tyrell's in um, um, Christ's office to basically protect him. It's like, no, dude, that's not how it works. Anyway, they go to the trial, and Cryus basically ascertains that he was going to be the next one murdered because he left her a thank you note saying, thank you for letting me know that Humo was pregnant. And, like, she gets, like, she accidentally gives that away, so he's like, yeah, I knew you were in my f***ing office. Like, the other thing is, too, is that Cryus basically is okay with it. Yeah. Like, he's, he's just, okay like, he gives her that look that they all give her, and is like, you know what, you're going to do great things. Like, I'm just going to die for you. Zen keeps telling her, too, that murder is okay. Yeah, like she's like, he's against it at first, this. though. He's like, no, stop get, letting people be, stop being a murderer. Like, he calls her a murderer, and like, you're a murderer. Yeah, that's killer. the whole premise of like how things start with him, but then he flips the script so hard and, and so easily. Like, you like, deserve a break and to be happy, so murder. <laughs> yeah, so murder's the answer. Anyways, after that, it basically just leaves her and Lucian, and she can't kill Lucian, so Lucian's like, you know what, baby, I'm gonna kill myself for you. And she doesn't care. Like, it doesn't affect her. And she's just like, she feels right. so bad for Lucian, but or she feels so bad for Zen and is like, now Zen can go back to his time. He says no and stays with her. And like, I don't know, that route, like, it's technically the better of the two, of the four, but it's very much the cringiest. It's the cringiest. It's the most interesting in a sense because you're learning new things and things are starting to make a little more sense, but that's really it. When they're investigating, they have to go to the castle and um, Lucian, who's really jealous, doesn't want Zen to get into the castle. Um, Zen is like, don't worry, I'll be able to get in the castle, no problem. He leaves for 30 minutes, takes a very important high-ranking test in 30 minutes and oh it gets God. access into the castle. I hated that. This whole scene, it's supposed to, like, because they tell you how long it takes it's supposed to be three hours like on the dot right they get there he does that whole test changes his outfit they get in there and then they run into male diaz who is the painter have a whole like they chop it up for a while and then they're like yeah let's like let's, if you want to talk to the people the women in the castle like you gotta like get yourself together and so she turns into haruhi from Orem high school host club <laughs> and charms these women basically so how is this all happening in three hours then they have a whole party like so that doesn't make any sense but yeah so then basically you find out so like lucy and himself and then basically um zen knows that she's about to do the fatal rewind and he's like you got to do what you got to do and she's they make a pact so this leads directly into lucian's you stop going from the mc's perspective and you are now speaking from lucian's perspective lucian basically says that when they were five they had a strong bond he told her that they were going to be like she's like we're when we grow up we'll be together which she Wait, what's, what's Zen and MC's path? She'll basically go into hiding and stop doing the favor of rewind and save everybody, and he just agrees to let her do it. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure we told them. Yeah, that's basically what happens. And then in Lucian's, he said they made a pact together when they were children that she forgot. Yeah. She just doesn't care. Um, the reason why she forgot is actually really lame, and we'll get into that in a second. But anyway, so then Lucian's like, I'm going to find her. He can't find her. I'm going to be with her. We're going to be together. And like, that's it. I'm going to save her. I'm going to do right. I'm going to be the king and change things. Yeah. But so hop into Lucian's route. The first thing you see is his cat named um, Lady, whatever your name is. Yeah. <laughs> Which is he's, crazy. He's Mr. Bitchless. And it's really crazy because... What I don't understand is like, they've only well. had so many interactions. Like, as children in the letter, and now you're naming a cat after me. Like, boy, like, we need to talk, like, we need to get it. It's like really sad. It's really insult. Yeah, lives. it comes off a little creepy. When, is it Tyrell that comes in and is like helping him out? Or am I remembering? It's male. Model. Oh, it's male. Yeah, because, yeah, the brush was in his face. I remember. So that. then he was like, You named your cat after her? And he's like, Oh, I'm kooky and I draw cockroaches. And it's like, Nobody cares. Yeah. Um. So the witch, now keep in mind, the witch ruin can also become male and give it pretty much anybody he wants to be, cho to, chooses to be the painter. So anyway, Lucian's like, I'm gonna find him. And, uh, or find her, not him. I'm gonna find her. And like, it doesn't want to make a big stir by using any of like the funds at his disposable like disposal for the castle anyway he goes out and then he runs into Cryus and he hates Cryus because he feels like Cryus is oh no Orla comes in and is like oh you should be with me and he's like no I, I don't want to do that but like and what he, about your sister and she's like oh she's actually a harlot who has six kids and he's like <laughs> yes yeah, so oh, I lost so much touch with her that I didn't know this was possible it's like Orla's yes. lying by the way yeah Orla's <laughs> lying and um, so, basically he gets information though right that's why he goes to Cryus 
cries. He believes it too easily, too. So then he goes to Christ, and Christ basically is like, I'm here to find women to get money for the Gardua, or the, yeah, like the Gardua, whatever. Yeah. And so then he's like, but I'll help you out because I do care about her. And then they go into the tavern, and they and um, they have code names, and they're like, yeah, cool, 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 cool. They, Tyrell comes in, and Tyrell's like, I guess I'll help. I don't know her, but whatever. And then... This is like basically the route where they all join forces. And so none of them remember anything except for Jen. This is Jen. <laughs> Can you imagine this thing is Jen? <laughs> Just like a wig. Anyways, except for Zen. But they basically fill in all the guys. Zen is like, listen, like she... He basically says like he knows where she's at and then like lets her in and then they like snitch and he's like, yeah, he, she had a thing with all y'all, but like none of y'all remember. And Lucien is like, what? <laughs> Lucien's like, so she is a whore. <laughs> Line. And so, like, I feel the worst for Tyrell because Tyrell has to learn that, like, his people were slaughtered and, like, he was used as, like, a tool and stuff. And that, like, and he's not... kind of like a soft soul. In, like, so Whereas Christ is kind of like, well, what can he do? <laughs> like, just goes Christ is like, I believe that. Yeah. And I believe, believe I fell for her. They just believe it. And so then, um, basically, what you find out through this whole entire thing, and as they're basically going to try to basically turn the flip, flip the switch on the witch. Oh, that rhyme. Flip the switch on the witch. They join forces, but... She's been hiding out in the same room that she wanted to forget yeah, about. Yeah, because she wants... she, But she did this so that she doesn't basically do anything. She went to go to her past self, and she has a barrier so that the witch can't find yeah, her. Yeah, so she's her, she's gotten strong enough to put up a barrier around herself. They never explain how she gets to that point, and she's basically just there in that dungy, like, um, basement area, and everyone goes and visits her every single day and tries to get information from her, and they, like... She tells them kind of about their past together, one by one by one except for Lucian she doesn't allow in like so because she doesn't care about Lucian she's so mean to him but then she realizes like why she forgot about him was because she tucked away her memories because she was felt like she wasn't strong enough which was really flimsy because it's like what but even when she remembers it's not like the second she remembers she's like doesn't have this like overwhelming feeling of like he was my first love no she's just like oh yeah him and he has different feelings for her and that's because the witch disguised himself as Maya back when she was like between eight and 10. And I think it was 10 because it was eight years ago and she's 18 now, yeah. So when she was 10 and was like, basically forced her to write a letter to Lucian telling him to do all these things to plant a seed of despair. So basically, Lucian receives this letter. And bases it, his whole personality off of it. Literally bases his whole personality off of it. It encourages him and he basically, it makes it his mission to find her. And so because of that, the witch thinks that she would fall for Lucian too, and then in which case it would be really painful when Lucian dies, because Lucian's always one of the early ones to die. <laughs> um, problem with the plan is she doesn't fall for Lucian at all. So she doesn't care that he dies so many times. He's she's like, and she just so plainly says this to Lucian, like I guess he was trying to do that or whatever, but it didn't work. And then he's like, it didn't work, huh? And he like gets in her face and is like, seriously, you're she's just like, gonna play with my feelings? He's like, don't tell me how I feel. She's like, I'm not telling you how you feel. I tell you how I feel. I'm saying, I don't like you. <laughs> so they go through all that and they decide to come up. And so like, I will say it's funny, it's like comical because like Lucian comes up with this like to do plan, and he's like, we're just gonna defy the witch, and that's it. And, and he's like, all we have to do is get the people under control, and we have to do that with a good folklore story um it was even before that it was before that like they come up with a very crap plan and they all cries and zen agree and tyrell's like hmm all it makes me think of um it's it, the most popular girls in school and it's like hmm you know what's wrong with that plan the whole thing yeah literally. <laughs> and so then they come up with yeah, the fol folklore and like all this they convince his dad to let them have a speech and then basically conrad foils it she's like i'm not gonna let lucian die again yeah so basically conrad comes in with that artifact that rose and it's like why don't you even prove that you're the prince because basically he comes on and he's like tonight this is what's going to go down the witch is going to come to one of you and he's going to convince you that he can give you powers and he doesn't give you any magical powers here's where this is wrong in the very first one in cryus he does give orla magical powers because that's the only way that she could have entered the locked door room yeah and have no nothing be wrong murder and then escape <laughs> so that whole plot point is completely a plot hole and wrong but anyways yeah. that's what they think they figured out they figured out that the witch is basically deceiving people so lucian's here to tell the people to have hope and that it's not right and you're not going to get what you wanted in the end they use zen as a decoy they say this man he did it last night and look what happened to him he's getting beat and tyrell's like whipping him and stuff and then that's tyrell gets like locked up too for it and so does um zen and then basically that's when conrad comes in that they get locked up yeah, yeah and then basically she comes in on huma this giant red bird now and then she's like i am the true goddess of science she pricks her blood and proves it as she does the jewels and she's like lucy and my love i guess my friend 
person, come with me. <laughs> like, yeah, they so she go, basically is like giving credibility to Lucy. Yeah, so then she goes into this, like where the goddess is. So the goddess, when she does, in the time she talks to Rune, and not the witch of Rune, but Rune, like the person who's helping her fatal rewind, she finds out that the goddess is actually asleep and that they're in this in-between world. She goes to the in-between world, basically. It also that the witch is obsessed with her. The witch is obsessed with her. Finds out that basically that the um, Neshbaum family, um, Luce, Lucius, who from like many eons ago, the goddess made Historica and made all this wonderful stuff. Um, Lucy, Lucius or whatever kill, kills her, but she's immortal, so she can't die. And then um, they go and pretend that this other woman is actually the goddess, and then they've basically built on lies of deceit from going and going and going and going and now she's like kind of where she wakes up and then yeah so basically at this point the witch i guess takes hold of them and they go to this other area where the goddess is sleeping by this fountain and then she wakes up and speaks basically to the mc directly and what's crazy is they have like this whole magical moment the witch is like wow she's so beautiful lucian from across the room is like wow look at that like amazing goddess and then when they get into the moment the first thing mc think is like she's average to me like she ain't nothing special They're and it's like same. what so what are you doing? Like, this is literally the goddess of the world. And the goddess is like, oh, I didn't want you to suffer. Like, cool. But basically, they, they, the loophole that they find is that the Rich of Ruin wasn't actually doing what the goddess said. So now everything can be undone. And he, like, yeah. has to forgive and let everything go. And then it just... There's a couple of choices that you can make at this point. Um, and if you choose to keep your powers, you can unlock Zen's after story. And then you have to go back and then choose to give up your powers, and then you can get um, Lucian, Cryus, and Tyrell's story, and then once you've played all of those in order, make sure you don't turn off your game at any point in between and go back to a save, because you'll have to do everything over again. Um, then you unlock the Witch of Ruins after story, which is basically just a glorified Q&A session. Yeah, so I just want to say this too. Um, the game kind of ends, and the only time you get actually any lovey-dovey anything is when you get the after story. It's really, really short. Tyrell now realizes that you're the goddess incarnate, and he treats you like this goddess and then oh and it's you. important to note that the after story it, every single time it's starting from this timeline of where you were with lucian it's all actually the same timeline yeah so, so none of them remember you so yeah reason. um so that's the game and if it was confusing to you it was confusing to us there's that was so like many, a nightmare to try and explain <laughs> yeah there's so many plot holes we would text each other constantly this plot hole in this plot i'm hole. sure we're missing a this? bunch we're missing a bunch of things we just did not like the game i do not recommend buying the game unless it's on sale for about 75% off. I would not Yeah, pay like I don't think I'd pay more than $15.99 for it. And even then I, I wouldn't pay for it. I just don't like the game. And I don't know what to say. It's like, not a true ode to me in my opinion. It's just so it's just so bad. There's mechanic issues with the, like mechanical issues within the game. The game's not playable in certain aspects. Like for me, the way that mine's glitching right now, I can't even play the Witch of Rune story again if I wanted to yeah. to make new choices because you can ask him questions and I wanted to ask other questions. So we had to do it on Jan's switch there to go ahead and get the rest of those questions answered, which basically he says I don't know to all of them. It's stupid. But anyways, I think the most romantic part of the entire time was these small, short, little after stories. I only liked Cryas and Tyrells. I felt like Lucian's wasn't earned. Zen's was really lame. And obviously the witches wasn't even romantic. Yeah, so also when you do the Q&A, you find out that basically the goddess Norna gave birth to the Witch of Ruin. So it's really It's her weird son, basically. Really went super obsessive with it. I think the problem too with a linear storyline like this, it completely erases all of the buildup that they did with any of your character. There's just no true person that you're going to get to because it just seems cheapened. She was clearly into all of them. It's like, I'm not saying that you can't be in love with more than one person. That's not impossible. I'm saying the way that it was written is that she completely stopped the feelings for whatever person. And it's kind of a slap in their face that they have to constantly watch her be with somebody else on the same time timeline and she kind of ignores a lot of the rules i yeah. think her thought process of i'm gonna kill myself to solve all the problems and restart was very selfish and i didn't like it i didn't find her relatable i just didn't like her character and she was just mean she was self-centered she really only thought about herself and then like i said i feel like she was really disrespectful to the goddess like i get she's a reincarnation of her so maybe they're trying to take like a humble angle so like she keeps calling her average and basic because it's basically just her just in like a dress and long hair but I don't know, I just thought it, it just came off like off-putting as ever. Like I feel like if I, she just came off as kind of like, she didn't come off as a girl's girl to me. Like no. to me, if I were to see the goddess, I'd be like, 
in awe and think she's so pretty and amazing and like I don't know I just feel like she was just not anything to do with our personalities like yeah it just was very hard to relate to her I also want to say too Lucian came off as a very pick me energy I'm doing this for you and help mom and you to be happy but she clearly didn't like him and they didn't build them so his did not feel earned in any way it was his very after just story was insane wh- they basically like she's gonna marry Conrad but then she then Lucian's like why don't you just marry me instead and that would fix everything and she's like oh yeah I guess so and then Maya's like but don't you want to marry someone you love and she's like someone I love and then he pops into her mind and he's she's like oh I guess it must be Lucian that I love I guess I love him and then they get married that's literally it yeah Zen is in their new so why they have like an HR or CPR cars and stuff is because Goddess Nona took and traveled between worlds and then took things that she liked from each world and threw, and them, in threw there. them all together um, yeah. so Zen was kind of won by accident because she left one of the doors open and that's how he wandered in and it's a punishment that he's immortal which is really shitty right so it's just a mistake it, it doesn't feel purposeful yeah like, so he doesn't have meaning so I don't like that um, I just don't like that Tyrell like Tyrells and stuff too like to give they don't really explain a lot about the issue or what ha- like comes cl- come Coming up to what's going to happen going forward. It feels like it they came really... up with these things like off the top of their head. Yeah. Like as a plot device. Instead of something that actually has meaning to the world as a greater purpose. They never revisit her distaste for um, her mom. Her, her mom. stepmom or whatever. And, and her dad. Like her dad's the one who dogged her out. They leave a lot of open-ended things. I just personally will not buy another Voltage game that's console first um, until I see a lot. Unless of... I see a, a concept that... I really like like and I, I would not pay the $50 again I just again for me this was not a game for me I'm not saying that dark, it's because it's dark concept it's, this game genuinely had so many plot holes so many questions I've seen comments I read the reddit threads of how people left I'm telling you from my perspective I didn't like it even after reading the positive comments I'm like I didn't get that I don't and I it's also it. a digital only so we can't even sell it like yeah. that it's there's it, there's really just only risk like honestly I almost wonder if I should complain because of like the way that it crashes so much and stuff I would definitely and also for has I know I saw a couple comments like it was it seemed like there was budgetary issues the game we saw the budget yeah the it budget. was close to two million USD how how? 200, two million US dollars to build the game. You can write it as long as you want. This means that you have the time and they chose not to. So I think that it was lazy. There's a lot of just, hey, well, you kind of ignore it. And it doesn't really matter. And she just like also the level. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, she says things where like she brings up the revenge thing. And maybe if we chose the revenge option, then that would happen. But I she makes it seem. Revenge. She makes it seem as though like I should, I've been living for revenge. She really hasn't. She's just been going back trying to not have Maya She's been living for the future her whole time. She was trying to set everyone up for the future, including herself. So it didn't even make sense that she was... The revenge thing was just short-lived. It was kind of just in crisis, to be honest. Um, But also just the level, the quality of the game, like the... The, from the plot to the art and everything, I feel like this probably would have been a little bit more innovative and cool in like maybe 2013, 2014. Like had it come in then, people, like I don't think people would give it too much. But it's 2022 and this is like your entry into the market after having a company since like the 90s and this is what you gave us. It's yeah. very, very disappointing. And yeah. I think we can leave it at that, right? Yeah, so that was our take. It's been it's a pretty long one. So. <laughs> yeah. Definitely comment on your thoughts. If you've played the game and you liked it and you want to definitely talk about it, definitely comment. comment if you want to like comments. come for us and like fight. Yeah, if you come for us, <laughs> well, we got it. We got it. We want to talk about it. We want to debate. We want, it's our, that's just how we feel. If you like the game, tell us why you like the game. We have no, nothing against it. I just wasn't my Yeah, like are you okay with the plot holes and you're just maybe so into the dark vibe? Because like, no, there's been games that because I'm so into like fluffy slice of life, I just let it go. And I'm just yeah. like, I like the vibe so much that I'm, I'm living for it. So maybe that's what it is. I don't yeah. know. So, but that's our take on it. Thank you for joining us for another Latin Foam podcast. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.